Hello. Um, I want to talk a bit about uh, glow and perfect and selective glow. So I will start with a bit of glow. The most important part maybe is to to make two simple parameters that you can easily control in live or map it into live. So if we just press it, you can see these two parameters that one makes the blur and the other controls the glow which occurs on top of the blur. So what happens here is that first I send the grid shape, in this case just a sphere, and then copy the copy what I got in the render into a texture which is called text one and it's here. Then I apply the texture and send here into the screen shader which combines two textures together. Yeah. Why do we need that? It's for the glow because I will feed back something that passed through the blur, the texture that passed through the blur again and again and combined it with the original texture. So the shape came here without a blur, then a blur effect occurs and combine it with the original again. So it happens over and over and what we get here is the glow. Um, so we can control the glow which basically is the feedback amount of the blur here. So if it gets close to one of course we get out of control because the feedback is one but if we get lower than one well then we can get nice control of the I saw this routine a long time ago but it's quite <laughs> detailed blur I think but if we check this built in slab for that so you can use this Gauss 6x which sent six times for for blurring effect and you can see it here again but sometimes it's nice to have a detailed one that divided into a few steps um, usually the, the, the blur shaders it should be first in one direction and then in the other direction you can see here like if we have it the window and see what's going on in the first one So you see it controls the the uh, x the x direction, but if we can do it for both directions, that the parameters you can send to the shader. We need do it for both directions. Then if you do it again and again you don't see this discontinu discontinuities in the blur. So you can control also the um, the intensity by multiplying the the number you send, the value you send. Uh, but sometimes you would want to use one of them or just maybe you can delete this pathway and just make it like that and you do different type of blurring and blowing effect or just in that direction which can be nice so yeah. okay so that's quite straightforward now the problem of course if I try to put let's say another grid shape then then I get this effect for both of them and most of the time you want to control that so just one object maybe will be with a 
glare and glow and glow but the other will be normal um, so that's an important feature which basically you need to another text tool one with the blur stuff and glowing and one without and then combine them af after uh, the learning stuff so let's let's see how it works with another pitch so here we have one with and one without and you can see that we have this working yeah. So what I did is first raising everything, then send something text to one with stuff with pass one and text to two with pass two. And now the blur will take place only for text one. So that's the stuff we did with the blur and glow. Here it happens to text one. But now we use another screen for text two. And text one together. So text to one and text to two will uh, will be mixed together at the end. Here we just edit here. We can use also this mm, screen thing. But um, that's that give you what what you need maybe. But we can make an interesting stuff with that like the bright lights so what happens here so we can see almost the effect of the of of, uh, of the glow from uh, from shape 1 on this one so it's not glowing or something like that just like interact with it yeah but now it's less yeah, look stuff but the important part is always make it eventually simple to control okay so that's all for now see you later